perfect. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, there you go. A awesome. singing intro. Oh. There we go. So we're going to need you to sing the intro. <laughs> you do that, that'd be great. Thanks. You're listening to MPS Connections with your host, AJ Hoffman. Hello, friends. Welcome to MPS Connections with your host, AJ Hoffman. Uh, go ahead and introduce yourselves. I am Jillian Seamster. I teach third grade at Central Park, and I am a proud Midland Public Schools graduate. Uh, Sarah Cooper. I'm a first grade uh, gifted and talented Alps teacher at Central Park, um, and I'm also a project lead the way lead t- teacher. And as like Jillian, I am a MPS grad as well. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Nicole Ballette. I teach second grade at Adams Elementary. We're here to talk about Project Lead the Way today. These teachers are all Project Lead the Way teachers. Um, would I get anything wrong? They're gonna correct me because I don't know that much about Project Lead the Way, but it, it's it's a fantastic program from talking to Gen Service and she always has a ton of guests for me to come on, So, but I, I kind of handpicked you three and I know, Sarah, you and I, we grew up together, yep. so yeah, I definitely wanted to have you on the show. So let me just, let's jump right into it in the questions, because uh, I know a few of you have other meetings, and I'm cutting it close. You guys had a long day today already, all right? So what are your, your students enjoying most about Project Lead the Way opportunities, and what are some of the biggest benefits you see? So I think the biggest um, enjoyment that the kiddos get from doing Project Lead the Way is that it's very student-led, it's very hands-on. They're kind of taking um, the inquiry themselves and running with it versus the teachers just kind of dictating and being the givers of knowledge. They're really working through those modules to gain the knowledge as independently as possible. Um, The biggest benefits that I see as a third grade teacher is just the use of scientific language and the use of scientific writing through the use of lunch logs and journaling, um, the use of observation, and just a lot of those reflection and conversation opportunities that they get through the activities that they're completing. I was just going to say, you probably notice a difference in their language and stuff in there. Yes, for sure. As the year progresses, right? Mm -hmm. Definitely. Sarah, how is this teaching and learning different from you from a traditional science curriculum? Well, for for us, it's it's really kid based. They're in charge of their learning. We're the guide on the side. We very much structure it so they get to explore, they get to build, they get to retest, they get to redesign. Um, they go through the design process on four different uh, modules, and so they get the chance to try it out multiple times. And if the first time doesn't work, they try it again the next time. Um, We've been pretty fortunate here at NPS to have uh, pretty hands-on science, Um, but the nice thing about Project Lead the Way is it is the same language, the same format, K-5. So it keeps a little bit more consistency than we used to have. We used to have kits that came that was just for your grade level. Here they follow the same storylines, they follow the same vocabulary, and it follows um, K-5. Perfect. Okay, Nicole, this is kind of a a gen service question, so um, yeah, be patient with me here. How... (laughs) How are the Project Lead the Way modules transdisciplinary relating to other curricular areas like reading, writing, math, et cetera? And this is a big one, and it connects with, um, uh, I think that's peer-to-peer? Uh, primary was... years program. Thank you. Yes. Yep, I told you I'd screw it. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, our, it definitely connects through PYP, which is um, our primary years program, which leads into then our high schools being an IB school. And uh, the biggest thing is that, at least I know in second grade, all of our units connect to um, one of our PYP units. And, you know, for example, right now we are learning about maps in our world and landforms, and one of our second grade units for Project Lead the Way is about erosion. So you can really connect it through that. Um, And then, you know, there's projects uh, involving Google. So they have online work, they have reading and writing. You connect it through so many aspects of literacy. And really, they do such a good job, kind of generalizing and connecting it through the PYP or the Project Lead the Way story, um, connecting it to a real world problem that then students are better better able to see it in other ways, um, see it through literature, see it through their writing, and kind of connect it that way, where it's not only science focused. They don't look at it and think, oh, this is something we're only doing in science, but we can do it across our entire school day. Kind of encourages critical thinking. Yeah, yeah, right? and. And it really helps them. I think the biggest thing is just 
envisioning themselves doing the problem in their own world, you know, planting seeds. Oh, I can plant seeds in my own garden at home. And it's not just about how seeds are dispersed, but relating it back to a second grader's daily life. So that way, then you can connect it easier to things like reading and writing, because then they don't look at a story and think, oh, well, this isn't done the same way it was done in science. They're not in that lens. They don't have that focus. They can kind of broaden that focus, which is helpful. That's fair. Jillian, Project Lead the Way provides tr transformative learning experiences and hands-on STEM courses. What does this mean or look like for you guys? I think one of the biggest things for us as teachers and the students that we teach is that it's a very, um, it allows us to make connections. So whether that's making connections to what's happening in the real world, I would say for third grade and probably K-5, all of the problems that we do at the end of the unit after we get done, typically there's three or four modules, so to speak, within a unit. And the very end is connecting everything that they've learned to solve a problem that would take place in the real world. So for example, in third grade right now, um, we kind of combined two of the Project Lead the Way units into like one big unit. And then they got to choose whether they wanted to design a glider with the correct wings and horizontal stabilizer to send supplies to an area in need is what the overarching problem is. Or they could use what they learned about forces in motion and compo machines to rescue a tiger from a moat in a zoo. Um, so they kind of got to use all of, of what they learned in forces in motion and choose which problem they wanted to execute. So I think just the overarching theme that all of these things that we're doing are connected to real life. I was checking out some of those projects, the the tiger in the mo yeah. project. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty cool. It's pretty yeah. fun one. They like it. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. the one they did. Um, we got trained to be yes. trainers. We we had, <laughs> we to, had, we had to, to save that. the tiger. Yeah. <laughs> save the tiger. <laughs> Who came up with that? Or did you guys get that from like a different district or? That's, no? it's, it's in Project Lead the Way. Oh, it's That's in the Lead actual Lead. problem, yeah, gotcha. that we have to solve. So. But then you laugh because you'll talk to teachers and they're like, oh yeah, we're saving a tiger from a moat. And you're like, I'm, <laughs> I'm looking at another third grade teacher like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and then you realize that it's all theoretical and it's right. a small tiger. It's a small. It's, <laughs> yeah. When you say that initially, they're like, an actual tiger? And I'm like, oh no, oh, no friends. <laughs> no, not an actual tiger. <laughs> it's a toy tiger. <laughs> uh, Sarah, have you noticed a difference in the language? Well, we talked about this before. I kind of, mm -hmm. I spoiled it already. <laughs> yeah. Have you guys noticed a difference in the language that the students use from, say, just the beginning of the year towards the end of the year as far as hands-on projects go? Yeah, definitely you can see, um, especially being a first grade teacher, I see them after just one year of the Project Lead the Way. And so you can definitely tell that they're starting to get more creative with how they design their projects. They get more uh, being a risk taker. They're willing to take a stab at it, try something outside the box. Um, also, we also see things like we use uh, some programming for coding, like Scratch Junior, and then they use Scratch in the bigger grades. So you can also see the progression of their abilities and what they can do as they progress through as well. Nice. I also think just like perseverance is a huge mm -hmm. skill. And I think especially when you're young, like learning to kind of work through things um, they're not as quick in the older grades at this point to shut down. They're more willing to work through a problem, too, which I think we can give credit to PLTW for. That's really interesting. Mm -hmm. That's cool. You guys all notice that? Mm -hmm. okay. I think the biggest thing across, like, coming in and even just throughout the year of second grade is the language as far as the engineering design process, mm -hmm. too, because that's used in every single module. You know, you're asking, you're evaluating, you're designing, and that... I can see being used in other other types of activities that we do, not just Project Lead the Way, but I know that that's kind of driven from that general language, using it throughout the years, too. Perfect. Uh, Sarah and Jillian, you guys are both in the same building. How much do you collaborate with each other on, on your class's work? Uh, definitely your grade level team. We collaborate a lot with because um, a lot of times it is tied within our PYP units. And so we collaborate together to figure out how we want to go about it, uh, how our timing's going, and things like that. We do have um, classroom buddies, too. So I know um, that in years past, third grade, when we do our coding unit, has also like gone to our buddies, which this year happens to be kindergarten. Um, and we'll kind of show them the interactive story that we make on Scratch. So. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Talk about Scratch a little bit. I know, like, 
I kind of know what it is, but for parents that maybe don't know what it is or don't um, haven't used it or haven't heard their, their students talk about it. Um, so Scratch is a program that is on their computer and they learn to code basically in the in the lowest sense. So you have a start button, you have a chain of commands and they pull buttons. So it's very visual, you know, there's green buttons and orange buttons and each of them do different things. It might tell the character on their screen to jump. It might tell the character to move, you know, two left or one down. And they learn that they can set loops to make characters repeat actions and eventually, um, at least in second grade, they create a little video game. Um, so they use those, you know, kind of basic functions and tag them together to learn to create eventually, which would develop, you know, as they get older into longer strands of code. Um, and I even personally find it really cool because that's not something I'm even familiar with until now that I teach it. And it's fun to see that even you could take something that we use in our world every day and kind of bring it down to a level that even, you know, seven and eight-year-olds can handle and even first graders. Um, and it's, it's pretty cool that they can kind of start off in second grade because I know that's not something I ever did when I was in elementary school. So it basically, Scratch Junior starts out a little more kid-friendly, lower grades, and then as they move into, I believe, third grade, they start using Scratch. Right. I think, like, our age group, like, the, the quickest we, we started with code was MySpace and stuff. Mm -hmm. And that was, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. same with you, Jillian? Yeah, the beginnings of social media. I mean, yeah, yeah, exactly. Now it's changed. Now it's now it's a part of school. It's, mm -hmm. it's yeah. integrated into school. So as far as Project Lead the Way Classrooms, and forgive my ignorance, but how do you, how does a, a parent kind of involve or get the, their students involved in the Project Lead the Way classroom? Or like, is that separate or is it just something that's naturally kind of integrated in, into your grade levels? I, I think a, a good way parents can kind of get involved is uh, look at classroom newsletters. Most of us all write what's kind of going on in all areas of school and often tell us what the activity was and ways to kind of engage your child. Ask them what they designed, ask them uh, what their project was like, ask them what they discovered about light and sound, and kind of ways to kind of tap into what they're currently learning about. Perfect, okay. Yeah, and a lot of those, um, I know at least uh, at Adams, we've been starting to send home like specific PYP ones, which integrate a lot of the project lead the way. And I know when we did um, we are learning about plants and seed distribution. You know, I encourage a lot of them, like, grow something at home. Ask your parents when you're at the store if you can buy, you know, a dollar bag of seeds and see what can happen. So just kind of, like, taking it a step further to kind of have their own little inquiry cycle at home, I feel like, is an easy way. And a lot of these are, you know, affordable or small things that they can do that they don't even maybe have to buy and can just be things that they talk about or... Um, you know, and venturing outside and just looking and seeing and kind of making those at-home connections or outside world connections to what we're doing in the classroom, too. Awesome. Now, this last question, I think, kind of falls on you, Nicole, but I'm going to pose it to all three of you. What What is uh, Project Lead the Way done for each of you in terms of changing or improving the way you, you each teach? Jillian, you want to start? I just, I think one of the biggest things is um, kind of teaching myself how to teach in this way so instead of I'm more of a facilitator now versus like a distributor of knowledge so to speak I'm there um, for them for questions and those types of things but really they're kind of in charge of um, kind of discovering things more so independently, like aside from me. I love that. Yeah. That's a great way of putting it. You're you're more of a facilitator, more than like a pusher of lecture or yes. knowledge or anything like yeah. that. Yeah. Sarah, what what do you think? Yeah, kind of the same thing. Like I think you had to, especially because I think you know when we were students ourselves, it wasn't this way. This is right. not how we learned science. No. <laughs> and so you're used to somebody coming up and telling you what you know how everything is, and this is so much. You step away, and it's. What do you think? Mm -hmm. How is this? Why is this? It's really on them and their learning. And so I think for me, the biggest like transformation is being that guide on the side, keeping my mouth quiet and letting them do the thinking and tell you why and what their thoughts are. And I think that's been amazing to see. Well, not necessarily like shutting up or shutting down, but just sure. listening to what they're saying, yeah. right? Even if you know like 
they're down like, the wrong path. Oh, right. We're like, right. if you do that, yeah. <laughs> we're not. We're gonna have like a problem just to like let them let them do. make mistakes and persevere and not have me constantly saying that's, step one is step two. Yeah, yeah, that's how they learn, right? Yeah, by my, making mistakes, losing a little. My yeah. my answer is pretty similar. I think mine's a little more. I mean, similar as in, like, I need to, you know, there's a little less control. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of times as teachers, we like to have control. And most times it's it's good because you need to, you know, have control of your classroom. And, and then you have structure and expectations and even just, like, the order of materials. And a lot of times in these, you kind of just have to let things go a bit awry and get a little messy. And that's how they discover. And it's, it is hard in those moments where you're like, oh, but you're, you're, your structure's just going to topple over in like one second. <laughs> but that's how they learn, right? And that's, you know, how they learn to problem solve. And they learn how to have that growth mindset and to kind of come over and persevere through those challenges. But also just as far as like my organization, sometimes you're like, all right, I just have to know going into this that we're going to get sand everywhere. And it is what it is. <laughs> and, 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 that's, and that's okay, right? And I'll just clean it up later and we'll figure it out later. But that definitely has been a change of mindset, like kind of letting go and mm -hmm. kind of letting them take the lead on some things it can be tricky. And I am challenging myself to let that happen in other aspects of my day too, yeah. not just project lead the way, but it's a really good start, so. Perfect. Yeah. All right. Well, that concludes our show. I want to thank you each for being on the show today. I hope the nervousness is all subsided and good, right? Yeah. For sure. <laughs> we, we got through it. That was <laughs> <Yeah>. painless, right? <laughs> all right. Well, that's our, show. that's our show. We'd like to thank all of our listeners around the district, around the country, and around the world for tuning in. We've launched a district Instagram page, and you can uh, find and follow us by searching the handle at Midland Public Schools. Um, if you have a story idea, photo op, or event you'd like to promote, you can email us at communications at midlandps.org. Thanks again for listening to MPS Connections, and we'll catch you in two weeks. Thanks. Do you have an idea for a podcast? Email us at communications at midlandps.org.